Hey guys, welcome to a Pixel Vision tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make a pop art dog portrait, just like my thumbnail. So I'm going to show you how to shoot the photo in order to make the editing process easier. And then I'm actually going to show you how to edit the photo in Photoshop right after. See you guys there. All right, guys, here on set, and we have Kendall helping us out today. Keep our little puppy, Roo, here uh, sane. So uh, we have a very cheap setup, and it's going to work perfectly for a dog portrait. We have a light from her left, a light from her right. We have lights from above, and that is because we're trying to eliminate the shadows so that she's really easy to cut out from our fake green screen here, which is just a green shirt of mine. So here's the camera. Kendall, if you could get Rue to sit for us. See how there's no Good. shadow casted on the Good. shirt in the back? That's gonna make it a really easy edit. And we're just gonna make sure we get a picture of her we like for a portrait. Bruce. All right, so here we are in Photoshop with our picture of Rue. First thing we want to make sure is that our background layer is unlocked. That is layer zero you're seeing there. So let's go ahead and cut out Roo from this photo. So let's go to select, color range, and then we're going to make sure our eyedropper tool is selected. And we're going to uh, click the shirt in order to select the color of the shirt. And as you can see here, as I drag the fuzziness slider, um, it will determine what is selected and what is not. So if I adjust to the right, um, more will be selected. So there's a less strict threshold for what is selected based upon the color you used in the eyedrop tool. Um, and then to the left, you know, it's stricter and more confined to that color that you selected. So let's put it somewhere near the middle to make sure that the shirt is as white as you can get it without Rue turning gray or white. So that looks pretty good there at uh, 103. And let's select OK. So now we have the shirt selected. So let's go ahead and click that layer mask button at the bottom there. And then that's going to add a layer mask to our layer selection. So as we can see, Rue is cut out and that's not what we want. So let's all click on our layer mask and then click Command I to inverse this layer mask. And so what that would do is make Rue selected because it makes Rue white. What's white is visible, what's dark or black is not visible. So we wanna make sure we make Rue visible. And then let's click Alt and click to get back to our layer here. So one thing we notice is that the cutout is not perfect, which is not a problem. So we're going to refine our layer mask by alt clicking our layer mask to just show the layer mask. And now let's click B on our keyboard to select our brush tool and adjust the size of it um, according to what you need with our bracket keys on our keyboard. Now we're going to make the selection of Rue a little better by going up to our blend modes and clicking overlay. So now that we have overlay selected as our blend mode, let's make sure our brush tool is selected with B and that our foreground color is black. We're going to start brushing over the outside of Rue, so in those dark grays and those black areas with our black brush tool. This will make all those dark gray areas that are a little bit see-through true black so that Rue is cut out from the background better. Notice how when your brush tool is on black that the white and light areas are not affected. So you could kind of go over Rue on the outside there without affecting the cutout of her. So I'll speed this up so you don't have to wait as long. And now we're going to go over to our left and make sure our foreground color is white. You could click D in order to make it that default set of colors. And then we're gonna start brushing over Rue to make uh, those little kind of gray areas within her true white so that she doesn't have holes in her cutout. Notice how when you brush over her, the outside of her kind of turns gray into the black area. Just go back and make your foreground color black and brush back along the edge of Rue to make sure it is true black 
around her. All right, so it's time to fix the white areas in the background. So let's go back and change our blend mode to normal and just start brushing black over any white areas you see. So the areas around Rue aren't perfect, so let's clean her up a little bit by getting those bumps um, smoothed out with black, taking care of some blotches around her, and then let's zoom into her and clean her white cutout a little bit so that there aren't any holes in her cutout. So we'll just go around with our white and fill in those rogue black areas. Now that we're done perfecting our cutout, let's alt click on our layer mask and now we see that Rue is pretty much perfectly cut out. Next step of this tutorial is to go to image mode and then click 8 bits. What this will do is make it possible to access our filter gallery which you will see in a bit. If you don't do this then you will not be able to access your filter gallery. One thing I like to do is duplicate my background layer um, to make a layer that I can edit without messing up my original file. So now that that's done, let's go to filter, filter gallery, and see how our view is really zoomed in here. Let's go down to the bottom left and make sure we click fit in view or fit on screen, either usually work and uh, the filter we're going to choose is cut out for that pop art dog look. Um, you could really mess around with the sliders. What worked for me was five, four, and one on the sliders to the right there. Um, you know, your dog may have a different amount of detail and may look better with the sliders at different numbers, but the look you want to go for basically is a very simple cutout look with enough detail to tell that it's your dog. So we're going to go ahead and click OK, and there we go. Um, we have Rue, but you're saying, well, these green spots here are not what I want. That looks pretty bad. Um, uh, let's fix that. So what we're going to do is go down to your Adjustment Layers panel and click Hue and Saturation. So this is going to make a Hue and Saturation layer above all of our layers, which is fine. And then we're going to actually make it a clipping mask by clicking Alt and in between our two layers here where you get that square and down arrow. What that means is that the hue and saturation adjustment is just affecting the layers that it is clipped to. So that is layer zero copy here. Uh, we'll actually just rename that to Roo uh, to make that easy. Uh, so yeah, it's only affecting the Roo layer. So to change the green color to something uh, that looks more like Rue, um, let's go to greens here and click our eyedropper tool. And let's select uh, this green down here that we want to change. And let's click this eyedropper plus tool, which means we could add more colors to the spectrum that we chose. So see how we have this spectrum here? Let's go ahead, ahead and add this green over there just to make sure that the gr all greens are getting selected. So what we can do is uh, to, to fix this green problem, we are going to slide down the saturation tool to make it look a little more gray, which is the actual color of root. And we could change the hue to something a little more similar to what we want, uh, which is kind of this reddish, greenish, gray. And then we're gonna make it lighter. Um, because she is a, a medium gray color. So there we go. Um, we fixed the green problem. And we could actually go around and start fixing more colors that we like. So let's go in the reds. And let's uh, click our eyedropper tool. And see how this gray is a little red? Um, and the grays down here are a little red. And that's a little red. Um, we could go ahead and fix that by doing the same thing. So let's slide down that saturation and increase the lightness. And we're starting to get more of a gray look for Rue, which is exactly how she looks. Um, a couple more things to fix, um, like this magenta patch down here looks kind of weird. So let's go to magentas 
and let's click the eyedropper tool and we'll do the same thing to that magenta uh, maybe change the color of it a little bit kind of like that bluish gray make it a little lighter and uh, one more thing I want to fix with Rue is that orange in her ear I think that could be a little better um, so we could actually just go to yellows so it really doesn't matter what color you click on and um, because it'll automatically change the color to whatever you select so it's not affecting the yellows it's affecting whatever your eyedropper tool is selecting so we are selecting this orange in her ear and I kinda want that to be a little more uh, desaturated and maybe more that yellowy color and just around there just a little bit uh, darker okay so there we have Rue and she's looking a lot better and we could see the before and after so we're taking away all of that weird color that the cutout effect applied to our dog actually before we add the background color I think it would look better if we resized Rue and made it a picture of just her head so let's zoom out by clicking Z and alt and that will and just and just keep clicking on this until it zooms out far enough Perfect. Okay, so let's resize Rue to our liking by clicking Shift and dragging Rue here. And let's drag her up and we can continue to make her a little bigger until her head kind of fills that. And we could even make her a little bigger. And that is perfect right there. Okay, so now we have Rue resized to our liking. So now let's add a background color. So let's go to our Create New Fill or Adjustment Layer button down here. Click Solid Color and drag this layer. Oh, let's just click OK. And let's drag this layer to the very bottom. You know, this green is looking pretty good, but I want to change this to more of a blue. I think that would really make the uh, blue in her eyes come out, these little blue sparkles in there, and blue contrast this orange color in her ear really well. And let's make it nice and bright for that pop art portrait kind of look. I want a little more cyan. Let's see. I think right there looks pretty good. Okay, so we're almost done. Um, one last suggestion I have is to um, add a border around Rue to make her really stand out. So let's go to our Rue layer, right click, and then click um, Blending Options. What this is gonna pop up is a ton of different things you can do. All we need to worry about is the Stroke option. So let's select the check mark next to Stroke and actually click Stroke so that it brings us to the Stroke option and then there's already going to be a color in there for you but let's change this to a color we want um, a lot of people just do black you know black's gonna look good and let's increase the size to about let's say 21 pixels uh, looks pretty good in this case maybe a little bigger like 24 um, I actually don't like black for this particular portrait though so let's go to this color um, and change it to I think a, a light salmon would look good. So let's make it like a light salmon, light cream, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think right about there looks pretty good. Okay, so uh, um, our selection of Rue um, isn't perfect because as you notice, we have this little blotch here. Um, and let's see if we have any more. I don't think we do. Um, okay, so it's a pretty good cutout of Rue. So how we're gonna fix this, we're actually gonna go to our Rue layer, and then we're gonna make sure the layer mask for Rue is selected, and we're gonna make sure our foreground color is white. You could just click on this uh, little button here that says default foreground and background colors, or you could hit D, um, or uh, you, know, you could go in there and select all white, I like to hit D, um, that's the easiest way. So 
and let's just paint white over these little blotches. So that just means that the layer mask that we have here is turning completely white, whereas it was a little gray before. Um, any more areas that we may have missed? Yeah, it's a little blotchy down here, you can see. So we can just uh, continue on painting white there, and that'll kind of make it a little better. Um, let's see, any more areas we need to fix? Doesn't look like it. So that wraps up the first ever Pixel Vision tutorial. If you enjoyed that tutorial uh, and look forward to more exciting and fun Photoshop tutorials in the future, remember to hit that subscribe button and like the video. I'm also taking suggestions, so you could drop that in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you on the next tutorial.